Hickok 45 here, and as you can tell, we're going to shoot some 10 millimeter today. But you know what? This thing is too ugly to shoot. Let's see if we can find something prettier. Uh oh, I think I did. Look at that. Yes, it, and funny enough, uh, strangely enough, it uh, corresponds to the title of the video, I'll bet. Ruger SR 1911 10 millimeter. That definitely is a good looking uh, pistol. I have to say, whether you hate the 10 millimeter or you hate 1911s, well, if you hate 1911s, maybe it's not pretty, but that is a good looking pistol. Uh, even if it doesn't function at all, even if it won't fire, it's just a good looking gun. I, I, I like the looks of that, uh, that matte stainless steel and with the, uh, the black controls and grips and everything. I just think it looks good. I, it, you know, it's kind of a gunmetal finish almost, isn't it? How about that for a gun? Having I mean, gun shape that. You think I should shoot it? It is almost too pretty to shoot, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay? It has a magazine in it, but there's nothing in the chamber until now. So let's take a shot or two. And I think I'll just start out smoking a little pot. Yeah, man. 10 millimeter was designed for that. Also, bowling. Yeah, little known fact 10 millimeter. I think that's why Jeff Cooper liked it. It was great for bowling. Cowboys don't like it because they don't want to get shot with one. Neither do two liters. <laughs> oh man, or neither do 12 ounces. <laughs> uh, they do run in dry eventually, don't they? I have to have another magazine. That's all I have though, two mags. Put that torpedo in. Let's put one on the paper target lefty style so i'll have an excuse for it not being in the bullseye how's that maybe it'll be close <laughs> get that bowling pin out of the way <laughs> knock everything off i think i hit two liters with my left hand yeehaw stop sign yeah oh some more pot all right on the last round smoke look at the smoke hovering Hot smoke. <laughs> nice. Yeah, uh, this thing feels good. It, it does. And uh, it looks good. And what else do you want? Well, you want reliability. You want a firearm that works. Okay. And that's what we're all about here. We're shooting it and we're going to shoot some more and see how, how it does. And uh, so far, it's done fine with American Eagle. We've had a couple hang ups with the heavy stuff that. The, at least the let's see 880 grain trophy bonded jacketed soft point again i don't know if it, this needs more breaking in or whatever or a different more powerful spring because this stuff is hot but we've had a little issue with that we'll see how it goes today we'll shoot a little more of it uh this is kind of the mainstay the american eagle uh which is nice a lot of people uh and that's justified think you're not really shooting a 10 millimeter unless you're shooting really hot ammo uh, it kind of depends on what you're doing with it. If you're going hog hunting, you want some really good stuff uh, that, that the you know, like that. And there's a lot of it out there. There's a lot of boutique reloaders. There's some uh, really good 10 millimeter ammo, uh, and some really hot ammo. But if you're not hunting hogs with it, maybe maybe you just want something that's more powerful, substantially, uh, decisively more powerful than 40 Smith and Wesson, but maybe not extreme magnemized like some the 10 millimeter can be I, I don't know it depends on what you want i've as i've said before i have uh, you, you can shoot 40 and and probably in this one too uh, it's not advisable i mean it will function if you're in a pinch a survival situation and you had to you know get some food and all you had was one 40 caliber round or something 40 smith and wesson round uh, they're both 40 caliber but one smith and wesson cartridge or something 40 smith and wesson uh you could probably make it work in about any 10 millimeter but it's hard on the extractor and all that kind of thing but i did uh, experiment a uh, time or two i shot some uh, in the in the glock here i shot some 40 smith and wesson in it and it didn't break the extractor thankfully and it was american eagle and then you know, i shot 10 millimeter and there was a big big difference okay because i was shooting in the same firearm and I mean a big difference between even the, this is just regular old range ammo, it's not hunting ammo, but there was a big difference in the field and the recoil and all that between the 40 and the 10. Okay, just, just a kind of an FYI thing there, because some people think that any 10 that's not just barn burner 
uh, 10 millimeter ammo is, is just 40 Smith & Wesson. And that's not necessarily the case. Okay. So, what should we shoot now? I don't know. But again, we appreciate the ammo, of course, from, uh, from Federal. And uh, they make some great ammo. Let's see. Let's load up uh, a couple different things here. How about that? This is, uh, again, the SR 1911. It is, is fresh out, you know, and uh, it hadn't been out very long. In 10 millimeter. It's uh, Ruger's first uh, 1911, you know, 10 millimeter. And it seems a little bit like 10 millimeter is, it's always had a pretty good little following. It seems to be growing a little bit. I mean, why else would uh, Ruger offer one? Okay. Uh, I mean, that, that's kind of evidence to some extent that the, the interest is still strong and even growing, perhaps. And of course, when mainstream gun companies like Ruger offer a firearm in it, that that adds to the, uh, I guess, enthusiasm or the popularity of, of the round. So uh, that's good news, really. I mean, it doesn't hurt anything. And for people who just love the 10 millimeter, it's obviously good news. So we'll load a mag with both here. All right. And I've shot a good, well, I don't know, a couple of boxes, three boxes of the American Eagle, and I've not hit a bobble yet. I shot some, uh, uh, several magazines of blazer aluminum case i did have a hang up it was like uh, the first couple of three mags i even fired in the gun and one one hung up for whatever of course the gun's brand new i fired a, some more of it though after that and it, it seemed to do just as 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 well as uh, the american eagle okay i don't know i, mean, I don't want to make excuses for the firearm i just uh you know if a gun is new though it is new i don't know if that how much difference that makes or if it should make any difference, really. You know, uh, some of these firearms, and I tell you the truth, I'm not sure what they're saying about this one. I should read the entire instruction manual, shouldn't I? But, you know, some firearms will tell you, you know, break-in period is 300 rounds or 250 rounds and all that sort of thing. Uh, I never fully understood that, but, uh, you know, some, especially metal guns, you know, Glocks don't really have an issue like that, or most polymer guns, I don't think. But some guns do, and there is some truth to it. But uh, a lot of people don't think there should, you know, be a, a break-in period like that. It'll just work out of the box. So we're going to shoot some more American Eagle first, and uh, let's just wake up the gong. A 10 millimeter ought to wake him up if I can hit him. Let's see. Uh, where do I hold? Uh, right there looks okay. Yeah. Sounds pretty good. Some of you were worried about the new gong and how it was going to sound. Let me try a pig. High, it looks like, right? There we go. All right, got two with one shot. That made up for it. Wake up, Mr. Cowboy. <laughs> Had one left. All right, now we've got some trophy bonded. This stuff has got some juice. Good bullet, too, <laughs> on top of having some juice behind it. So uh, maybe we'll try to smoke a little pot here. Uh, see if I can pick off that drink off the top of it first. Uh, where am I going? Oh, okay. <laughs> and let's try that uh, hanging bottle there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Boy, you can tell the way it hits that steel, knocks it around. That's got some juice. There we go. Now the slide locked back on that round. It's not really a hang-up issue the slides locked back so I'm not sure what that's about it is a hot round okay let's see if we can get that one to go ahead and, and, and shoot it okay so I was getting a little bit of that with the uh, the trophy bonded and while we're at it let's shoot some of the uh, blazer again here okay you uh, you know you've got a handgun when you shoot that stuff, and uh, a lot of people uh, they want to shoot nothing but that, you know, when they're uh, you know 10 millimeter. So it just kind of depends on what you're doing with it. Uh, you know whether you're carrying it for defense, uh, a defensive uh, carry pistol. 
Yeah, I don't know if you want hog hunting ammunition in that, you know, or uh, something like that. They might have like serious over penetration, or you probably want a good hollow point. There's lots of ammo out there, and with a variety of, of bullets, okay, loaded into those those cases. You know, this gold dot, or uh, or uh, oh, what am I trying to think? Uh, I'm drawing a mental blank right now, but it's going to come to me. But well, anyway, there's lots of great bullets out there. And uh, for defensive carry, for hog hunting, or for whatever. And I, I, this should be a good one for hog hunting, no doubt about it. I would think. I've never hunted hogs. Might uh, do that sometime. Who knows? Uh, where's my other magazine? Let's put some ammo in it, too. I'll just put uh, two mags of this blazer. Okay. I just had, this is just some I had in the barn. Gosh, it's been in there forever. And... Uh, it, it, it may is not really a good good test. We're not into ammo testing anyway, but it's uh, it's made by CCI, yeah, it's, and uh, it's been in a barn for years. And uh, see how it does. It seemed to do okay earlier, but let's take a couple more shots with this. See how it does. All right, this is a fun gun to shoot. It feels good, really does. In addition to looking good, now it has great sights. It's got that old Bomar style adjustable sight on it. You know, uh, I'd need to put some white or something on the front sight, but uh, you know, it's it's a classic gun. Let's hit that old blue two liter there in honor of Kentucky. There we go. <laughs> nice. That hits pretty hard too, I'll have to say. That's uh, that's fairly warmish ammo. I know it looks this since we've got some, you know, 10 millimeter. Let's shoot the tree here a little bit. There you go, folks. That shows you the difference between a nine and a 10. <laughs> <laughs> Knocks them right back around, doesn't it? So that all fed pretty well. Okay. Yeah, we don't do a lot of ammo testing, but whatever I can kind of put my hands on, especially Federal makes it. They're so generous with their ammo and everything. They make something for almost every purpose, so it works out pretty well. Uh, but that's what you want. You want? Some, I mean, it's what I want in a 10 millimeter. I want uh, a firearm that will feed. Uh, yeah, anything that I might want. Now, I guess there's an argument if uh, if you've got a really special purpose ammo of some kind that maybe, and I don't know what the velocity is on, on the trophy bond, and well, it's probably got it on the box, but uh, how extreme it might be. Let's see, we're looking at the muzzle 1275, and I don't know how extreme, that's not all that extreme, but uh, some special purpose ammo, you might want to uh, take out the, the mainspring, put a stronger spring in it or something, and some pistols. I don't know if that would be this one or not. Or if this one just needs more of a break-in period, and then it would uh, function with that you know, more easily. And, uh, and I, you know, I'm not going to fire a thousand rounds through this to test it for you folks. I'm sorry. We'll let somebody else do that. I just want to show you the firearm and let you know what we think about it and how it shoots. And this business of uh, longevity it takes time to, to know that anyway so we just don't have the time it's not what we really do with every pistol is okay we got a thousand in this one or two thousand rounds through that one and this one still is holding together and whatnot I'll let the internet tell you all that because as time moves on here very very quickly there will be a lot of people who have quite a few rounds through this pistol just as has happened with the Glock 20 of course and we'll know if, if there's weaknesses that show up, we'll all hear about it. We'll see it on the internet, right? If the barrels give way after uh, 300 rounds or uh, 1,200 rounds, it will be fairly common knowledge, okay? So we'll all know that. But uh, as for now, this thing feels pretty good. Uh, uh, as far as features, what do you have here? You got the straight mainspring housing, the flat mainspring housing, you got nice serrations. Uh, kind of an extended mag release there. I kind of like that. Not a lot of ambi stuff. So, you know, if that's what you're looking for, you don't really have that. But this is kind of your standard 1911 size pistol. So it will take, you know, if you want to replace the grips or put a, another safety on it, an ambi safety, 
you know, it's, it is what it is. Basically, you're 1911. You know, put a different beaver tail on it. I guess you could even do that and change out triggers. So it is a 1911. Uh, and of course they make the, this firearm in other uh, calibers, right? 45, nine, everything. And one thing, before it gets too much hotter, let me in dirtier, I will show you the breakdown. Now, there is one uh, difference here. You can tell you got a big bull barrel out there, right? And no barrel bushing. Okay, that is a difference. And the way you take it down, and I've got the little pin out here. This comes with it, of course. Uh, you can, you know, bend a paper clip or something if you need to. But there's a little hole there in the full-length guide rod. I badmouth these full-length guide rods sometimes. I just don't see a need for them on most 1911s. Uh, I guess on a pistol like this, a 10 millimeter, it's a little bit of a different kind of animal, so I could live with it. Okay, you just put that in there, and that captures the, uh, you know, the guide rod there, the spring. And then you just bring this down, line it up, pull out the... And you know what, I hope I don't get run into trouble. I didn't bring out my little Glock tool or anything like that to line it back up. But uh, So then that's got that captured and then it'll just come out, it becomes a captured spring, see. All right, just like the Glock has over there. Uh, and bring out the barrel, I'll show you this thing. It is a ramped barrel, which is nice. It's a warm ramped barrel. You got a ramp there built into the barrel. I always like that in a 1911. And generally, uh, it's kind of a premium uh, you know, part. Uh, it costs a little more usually if you have a, a ramped barrel. And uh, it's nitride coated or nitrided, which is a good thing. Okay, so you got that big old bell on the end. Adds a little weight to it, which is uh, nice because it's a 10 millimeter. It might kick a little bit. You know, it seems to be well made. It is a, a Series 70 type uh, slide. You don't have the firing pin uh, block and that kind of thing. Uh, seems nicely made. Yeah. So what you get, 1911. Okay. Nothing all that unusual about that, other than the full-length guide rod, you know, and then the, the bushingless barrel. All right, 10 millimeter. Pretty neat. Okay. Let's put that back in there. Stick this back in. So you got a, an extra step, a little, a little more of a, an issue, I guess you could say, there with that full-length guide rod, but it's doable. I had a competition pistol years ago where I had to, to deal with that and uh, I used a paper clip there. Yeah, line up my link there get that back in yeah good job there got him in all right if I can keep from putting an idiot scratch on it for one of you whoever <laughs> ends up with this thing there, there we go I try really hard not to ever do that. Well, then you gotta lock the slide back and take out the, the pin there, okay? And you're back in business. But it's not too bad. I could gripe about it, complain about it, but you know, it's, it's not too awfully bad. Um, I don't know what else I could tell you. Oh, I know what I could tell you about the firearm is it has a nice trigger, nice trigger. I think it's supposed to be about four pounds, but it has a nice break. And of course the reset and everything, it, it, it feels, feels good. Just a, ah. yeah, no creep there. Yeah, nice crisp break. I thought it felt some creep there for a change. No, it's a nice break. You can't complain about the trigger, no doubt about that. Okay, nice beaver tail, uh, good looking pistol, titanium firing pin, did I mention that? Uh, to help with the, you know, being uh, drop safe and everything. Uh, it'd be nice if it had some front serrations. Can't have everything, but uh, just just feels good. It retails for I think MSRP is uh, if I didn't say it about 1,020, 1,019, something like that. Uh, so probably get it for nine something, uh, maybe nine even. I don't know. Uh, at least after it's been out a while. But pretty good, pretty good feeling pistol. And uh, let's we'll shoot it some more. How's that? Got some ammo here, and I feel like. I need to do a little wild boar hunting. Well, sheep hunting, put it that way. <laughs> now.
Well, that rascal didn't want to fall yesterday either. He's got a pedestal off, so he's kind of uh, sitting in a strange way. Let's try the ram below him. Or sheep. doesn't want to fall either all right let's try let's try a turkey now yeah, need more ammo <laughs> I know one thing I could do I could run over there with one of these uh, these hot rounds and knock them over let's put some of those in I'll get a different point of impact but I'll, I'll try it anyway here let's see if we can get a magazine of them to work reliably here these things have a little punch. Uh, with those metal animals, of course, uh, they're heavy, and then they've got, uh, uh, one of them has a pedestal also, it just depends on how they're set. Uh, sometimes they're, they're hard to knock down with anything, uh, so it's not necessarily an indictment of the 10 millimeter. Uh, it's just, uh, you just never know whether they're gonna go over. Sometimes they go over just fine with a, a nine millimeter. It's hard to know. All right, so we got the blasters here now. Trophy bonded, designed to kill a sheep or a goat. All right, let's try these. I'm not sure how that will change the point of impact exactly, but we'll see. I can usually tell whether I'm going high or low. And if I take my time, I can zero in on them. So. That one on top's the one that uh, didn't want to fall for sure, was it? Let's just hit him a little harder. <sighs> okay. There we go. Gotta sometimes just get out a bigger hammer. Missing, aren't I? Yeah, okay, I think I was going low. All right, so sometimes you just need a bigger hammer. Right, cowboy? <laughs> oh, they either, either limp-wristed or I did that again, so the slide stayed back. Let's try that cinder block. Oh, got to hit it first. I got another one. There's a little bit of a cinder block there. Since we got the big, heavy, trophy bonded rounds in here. <laughs> Bone crushers. Yeah. Got anything else that needs a heavy, hard hitting round? I guess not. I'll hit the tombstone there. You see the way it moves that around? Let's hit a plate, a swinging plate. There you go. Yeah, puts, <laughs> it puts some force on it. Yep, pretty stout. Maybe we can put one of these on the gong. I think I just have, uh-oh, one round left. Empty magazine, pressure's on. Let's see if we can put him on the gong. Probably went low. And we've got one more. That really puts the pressure on me. One more little measly bullet. All right. Just want to hear the gong ring with one of those. I think I was low on that one. Yeah, I don't know where it went. I'll tell you what I'll do. Sorry, gong. You're not going to get off that easily. I happen to have some Glock mags loaded up. And those are the big boys, too. There we go. How's that? <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's interesting. I, was, I had that loaded and these mags loaded for a reason. I thought I might do a little comparison. 
and then I really wasn't, but I changed my mind after the gong almost got away without getting hit hard. Um, I was just surprised just right then. One of the things that's, that's uh, always remarkable about the Glock 10 millimeters, how it just soaks up the recoil really well. But you know, after shooting this and shooting those heavy rounds, I'll have to say uh, that seemed to kick harder. Would, would have surprised me. I, I don't know. This, so this thing, uh, it, it's really comfortable to shoot. Even with the hot stuff, uh, I don't know. It might need a, a different spring, I, I don't know, to function more reliably you know, with the, the hottest rounds. I just don't know. Everything else seems to do just great. And uh, it feels good and it shoots well. Uh, I don't know. You know, in terms of uh, the verdict on it, I guess uh, you'd want to make sure that the spring is right for whatever ammo you know, you're going to shoot or the guns broken in well whatever it might be but uh that stuff uh, trophy bonded does have some punch to it no doubt about it uh but you know the other stuff that i shoot the most of seems seems to work fine in in the ruger so uh, it is what it is okay uh, all in all it seems like a well-made uh, pistol and there are other 1911s in 10 millimeter, you know the Delta Elite. I think who else makes them? Uh, gosh, I think there's quite a few now. I think maybe Dan Weston does uh, uh, One of the companies out of the Philippines does I think uh, There's somebody I'm forgetting that I that I was surprised. Oh, yeah Remington I think the Remington R1 is available in 10 millimeter, you know, and uh, and there's probably others, you know, by maybe some of the custom uh, gun makers and uh, but uh, this one seems to be priced based on the prices I have seen. Some of them are more expensive than this. I think the Remkin R1 is higher than, than this. This is around a thousand bucks MSRP. So, you know, it's priced reasonably. Seems to be well made and uh, has most of the features that you want, you know, on a 1911 that make it really shootable. You know, again, a little front uh, checkering would be nice, but that's expensive to do and do it right. Uh, I think there was something else I was going to point out that you were not interested in. I don't recall what it was, but uh, you know, it feels good in the hand. It really does. Uh, and it looks good. And it shoots well. Uh, you know, again, with the, the really heavy stuff, you know, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it needs a little more break in. But, uh, you yeah. know, Good to see Ruger making one, and there's a lot of 10 millimeter fans out there. Well, let's, you know what I gotta do before we wrap up? Just empty a mag real quick. Let's just do that, okay? Just for fun. Let's machine gun one. Uh, feel like I haven't shot enough. Comes with two magazines, of course. And I'm assuming any good, well-made uh, 1911 10 millimeter magazine, you know, will work in it. These are the only two I have, the ones that came with it. So, <laughs> never know when I'm gonna quit shooting. It's hard to quit. It's just hard to quit. I'm sorry. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. All right, let's, uh, I know what we'll do. Be appropriate to stop shooting on the stop sign. How's that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Feels pretty good. A uh, great trigger. You can really machine gun with it. Now, if you got some of that really barn burning ammo, you couldn't machine gun as well. But uh, it's, it's not the trigger that's going to prevent you. It'd just be the recoil. But uh, feels feels pretty good. So uh, anyway, it uh, seems to function uh, with the moderate power 10 millimeter. You know, uh, I guess 99-100% uh, reliability with that. And then a few hang-ups with the, the really hot stuff. But it still hasn't had, but how many rounds? Probably... 250, 200, 250, something like that. So that's kind of where it is. That's our take on it. And uh, that's just the one pulled off the shelf from Bud's. And uh, yeah, pretty nice pistol. And I, th I think it'll do well. You nine millimeter fans out there, you got another choice, you know, to at least study and, uh, and, and keep track of it, you know, see how, how it's doing and, and what other people's experiences are, you know, with this pistol, okay? and with different ammos. So, fun to shoot. Life is good. Hey, 
I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'm sure if you didn't, we'll be hearing from you. But while you're here, I wanna make sure you guys are aware of SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can get certified in gunsmithing with hands-on experience and also an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they are very accepting of GI Bill too. They work a lot with veterans. So go over to uh, sdi.edu and check them out. See if that's something that you're interested in. And also, while you're going out on the interwebs and looking at things like that, don't forget the Hickok 45 Facebook, if you're a Facebook kind of guy. Um, check that out, Hickok 45 Facebook. Also, uh, the real Hickok 45 on Instagram and Hickok 45 on Twitter. Don't forget to check that out. And also, we have a website now, Hickok45.com. Try to keep it simple for you guys, and especially those of you in Kentucky, www.Hickok45.com. You can go over there and find out about all kinds of different things that we're doing. Uh, we've got links to uh, the people that, that support our channel. We've got uh, links to our store. We have uh, merchandise, t-shirts and hats and different things over there if you want to check that out. So go to Hickok45.com. Most of everything is over there. Also, if you want to see some other content that you can't find on this specific channel, you can go to the Hickok45 and Son YouTube channel where that's you know, mostly me doing stuff over there and dad makes uh, an occasional uh, appearance over there. And also I have a Facebook, John Hickok on Facebook. You can also find the link to that in the description of the Hickok 45 and Son videos. And speaking of that, don't forget to check out the description of the Hickok 45 videos for any information about meet and greets and all that kind of stuff. Also, don't forget to check us out on Full 30. And if you've done all of that, all of those things, if you've completed all of that, then the only thing left to do is to watch a bunch more Hickok 45 videos. So I'll leave you to it and I'm going to finish painting these targets.